to another episode of Calvert Library's It's Elementary. Today we are going to be reading a book of poems called Unbelievable, written and illustrated by Douglas Florian. And following the book, I will be demonstrating for you how you can build a mason bee house. So if you'd like to participate and make your own mason bee house, the items that you'll need after the book are a can, and it could be a soup can, it could be something larger like a coffee can, any kind of can that you have will work. Some old paper that you'd be willing to recycle or get rid of, or an old magazine. Some tape, a pencil, scissors, and a ruler. All right. So let's start with our book, Unbelievables, a book of poems written and illustrated by Douglas Florian. And I'd like to say thank you to Beach Lane Books, the publisher, for allowing us to share this great book with you today. The first poem is called Welcome. Welcome, welcome to our hive, honeycomb home where we thrive, into light and sweetness dive, Guards greet you when you arrive. For hive harmony we strive. We keep busy staying alive. Welcome, welcome to our hive. Honeycomb home where we thrive. And one of the things I really like about this book of poems is that after each poem at the bottom here, there's a little fact for you about honeybees. And this fact is, honeybees will often use a hollow tree trunk as a site to build a hive. They may live there for several years. The structure of the hive is called a honeycomb, and it is made of many hexagonal, which are six-sided, cells of beeswax. Bee anatomy. Lovely legs, lovely hue, lovely long antenna too, lovely eyes, lovely wings, but ouch, how in the end it stings. And this fact is, a honeybee's body has three segments a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. The head has two antenna that are used for touch, taste, and even smell. Below the antenna are two large compound eyes with thousands of tiny lenses that detect motion and three small simple eyes that are sensitive to light. The thorax has three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings. The abdomen has the digestive and reproductive organs and in female bees only, a stinger at the tip. The next poem is called Queen Bee. I am no ordinary bee. I'm royalty, a queen, you see. I don't just raise a family. I rule a whole society. Each day I lay 2,000 eggs. Believe me, that's tough on the legs. My doting daughters feed my belly and I was raised on royal jelly. My princely sons are known as drones. Not one of those boys ever phones. When it's too crammed, then I take wing. With such a life, who needs a king? And the queen bee, it says, is fed royal jelly, a protein-rich paste, and eventually becomes the largest bee in the hive. Worker bees tend to all her needs, feeding and grooming her around the clock. During breeding season, the queen lays as many as 2,000 eggs a day, creating a colony of up to 80,000 bees. Drone. Brother, yo brother, behave in your hive. Hey drone, don't moan, don't groan, don't, don't jive. Your fate is to mate, don't be late, find a queen. Hey big eyes, hey bug eyes, be cool, make the scene. All drone bees in a hive are brothers. Their only job is to mate with a queen bee from another hive and they have very large eyes to help them find one. Drones are stingless and cannot defend the hive or forage for food. After mating, they die. Worker bees. Sister, 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 sister. Not one brother, not one mister. See us sisters work all day. Dawn to dusk, no time to play. We must feed the needy queen. Drones and babies, and we clean. When it's hot, we fan the air, have the hive in good repair. Always working, building, slaving, never ever misbehaving. All worker bees in a hive are sisters. The most important job is to feed the queen, the drones, and the larva. 
They must also make beeswax and build the honeycomb, clean the hive, guard the hive's entrance, fan the hive to keep it cool, collect nectar from flowers to make honey, and carry pollen from flower to flower. They are busy, aren't they? Busy bees. Summer Hummer. I'm the hummer of summer, so busy with buzz, a never hum drummer, all covered with fuzz. I'm a nectar collector, make wax to the max, a beehive protector, I never relax. I'm a lover of clover, a seeker of scent, a zigzag flyover, a thing heaven sent. I'm a dancer, a prancer, my own pollination, a flower enhancer, a summer sensation. And this says, like all insects, honeybees are cold-blooded and most active during the summer months. In winter, they cluster together for warmth, feeding and stored and feeding on stored honey. There are as many as 20,000 known species of bees, but fewer than 10 known species of honeybees. Bee coming. From egg I hatch in just three days, beginning my new larval phase. I dwell in a six-sided cell. My cozy home befits me well. Then as a pupa, how I change, becoming something else so strange. My body slowly grows until I'm truly unbelievable. And this fact says the bee life cycle begins when the queen bee lays an egg in a honeycomb cell. After the larva hatches, worker bees feed it royal jelly and then bee bread, which is a mixture of honey and pollen. A queen bee larva skips the bee bread and gets royal jelly continuously. The cell is then sealed with beeswax by a worker. Inside the cell, the larva spins a cocoon and changes into a pupa, growing legs, wings, and other organs until it breaks free from the cell as an adult bee. Waggle dance. We dance, we prance, we waggle, we wiggle. Come glance at our stance while we wiggle and jiggle. Our dance round and round shows where flowers are found and our figure eights show where pollen awaits. Scout bees are workers who perform different dances to alert the other bees as to where flowers may be found. If flowers are nearby, they perform a simple round dance, moving in loops in alternating directions. But if flowers are farther away, they perform a more intricate waggle dance, a figure eight pattern. Honey. So many blossoms, so many flowers, so much flying, hours and hours. So much nectar needed to eat, so honey all will end up sweet. Bees begin to make honey by taking nectar from flowers and depositing droplets of it inside the hive's honey cells. Then they fan the nectar with their wings to remove moisture. Later, they cap the cells with wax, which helps the nectar thicken into honey. A colony of bees may visit more than a million flowers to make just one pound of honey. Pollen. Pollen on my legs and feet, pollen on my wings that beat. Pollen on my cheeks and chin, pollen on my abdomen. I just took a pollen shower. I'm a fuzzy flying flower. One of the bee's most important roles in nature is a process called pollination. When a bee lands on a flower to collect nectar, the flower's powdery pollen sticks to her antenna, her fuzz, and her legs. When she moves to the next flower, she deposits some of the pollen, enabling the plant to reproduce. The beekeepers. We're the boys in the hood, girls in the hood too. We always wear white, the beekeeping crew. Check out our white gloves, check out our white boots. Hey, dig our white veils and baggy white suits. We're keeping the bees, we fret and we fuss. We're keeping the bees, or do they keep us? This fact says beekeepers have been harvesting honey from man-made hives for more than 4,000 years. In the past, beekeepers used woven straw baskets called skeps as hives, but today, most use wooden or plastic boxes. Beekeepers wear gloves, boots, and hooded suits, usually white, to protect them from bee stings. They also may use a bee smoker to generate bee calming smoke. 
bees buzz. All day we bees just buzz and buzz. That's what we does and does and does. Why are we full of fuzz and fuzz? Because, because the fuzz, the fuzz helps pollen stick to us, to us. That was a funny one. Bees beat their wings rapidly when they fly. This causes the air around them to vibrate and the vibration creates bees signature buzzing sound. The fuzzy hairs on bees' bodies have an electrostatic charge, which helps attract a flower's pollen grains. Swarm. When it's too crowded, then we form a cloud of bees that's called a swarm. We crowd and cram, we pull and push upon a post or branch or bush. Each scout seeks out a nice new nest. We pick the site that suits us best. And then we build a honeycomb, a busy, buzzy, home sweet home. When the hive gets to be too crowded, the queen sets out with a swarm of loyal workers to start a new colony. Scout bees search for a new nest site while the other bees wait, crowding together on a branch, post, or bush. After the best site is selected, the worker bees secrete wax and then begin building a new honeycomb. We are the bees. Bees give us sweet honey. They pollinate flowers. The bees wax and candle keeps, candles keeps burning for hours. But some hives have vanished. Some bees disappeared from mites or pollution or illness it's feared. Let's hope that before the bees come back strong and hives will be humming, bees buzzing along. And this fact tells us sadly that since 2006, thousands of honeybee colonies have disappeared. Scientists believe mites, viruses, pesticides, or fungi may be responsible for what is called colony collapse disorder. It is important that we try to remedy this situation, not only for the sake of bees and their honey, but also because many crops and wild plants depend on bees for pollination. We really need them. And that is the end. And if you check this book out from Calvert Library and are interested in learning more about honeybees, another nice feature of this book is at the back, we have a bibliography, which is supposed to be like a bibliography. And it gives us some of the resources that the author used in making and writing this book and all the facts where he got all of his information from and some further reading that you can do. So I hope you liked Unbelievables. It was a fun book of poems and we have lots of other books of poetry at Calvert Library and also books about bees. So come check out what we have. All right, friends, we are ready to make our Mason Bee House. So the things that you're going to need to make your bee house are a can, and I just have a small can, like a soup size can, but any can that you have is fine. I've got a bigger one here if you wanted to make a larger bee house. Um, so you're going to need your can and you're going to want to clean it out. And if you want to take the wrapping off of it, another fun thing might be to paint it with some non-washable paint. That would be really cute. And then you're going to need some scrap paper. It can be leftover paper that you have. It could be old magazines. Any kind of leftover paper is good. You're going to need some tape, some scissors, a pencil or a pen is fine too, and a ruler. So here's what you're going to do, and it's really easy. You're going to take your scrap paper, and I just like to hold it up to my can like that. And then I'm going to mark how tall it is. And the key is you want it a little bit under the top of your can because you don't want it to stick out the top. And then what I'm going to do is I've got my little mark there, and I'm going to measure it. So let's see, that's not quite five. So I'm gonna mark it like that. Oh, and you know what? Because this is a dark side of the paper, I'm gonna flip it over and mark it on the other side. It'll be easier for me to see. So I'm gonna do about five and three quarters. And yours will be different. So you're gonna measure your own can, and then I'm gonna go down my paper and I'm going to mark that all the way along, marking five or four and three quarters all the way down my paper. So I have a relatively straight line. And if it's not perfectly straight, that's okay. 
so we can always fix it. And it's better for it to be a little bit too long than too short. Okay, so then I'm gonna mark up all my lines with my ruler, get it relatively straight, and draw a line right straight down. And I'm gonna cut my paper along my line. Don't need that piece because that's not the right length. And then I'm just going to roll it up. And sometimes it's easier to get a good roll by taking your pencil and rolling your paper around your pencil. That'll make a nice tight roll. And you can actually probably get two rolls out of this if you wanted to. Take my paper out. And then I'm just gonna tape a little bit on each end to keep my roll together. And then I'm gonna test it out. And I think it might be a little bit too long, but that's okay. Let's see. Yep, it's too long. I don't want it to stick out above the edge of the can. But that's okay so I'm just gonna take it out and I'm just gonna trim a little bit at a time until I get the right height and so each of your rolls might be a little bit different depending on how much you trim off and that's okay as long as it doesn't go above your can that's still a little too long there we go all right, so that's good because it's not sticking out past the end of my can there. So you're going to do that over and over and over again until you have enough to fill up your can. And I already have a whole bunch of rolls that I've done here. And if you pick a big can like this one, like coffee sometimes comes in big cans or this is from tomatoes, you can use some toilet paper rolls to also help you fill some of your space. And then this one, I just kind of squeeze in. And then I would fill it with all of my white rolls of paper. But I wanted to just do a small one. And I'm just gonna tuck them all in here. And one thing that you can do as it starts to get full to keep your paper organized, you can go like that and just kind of tuck them down and then keep filling them up. And then once it's completely full, oh, that one's a long one, and you see that they're not sticking out past the edge, then you can hang it up. And you wanna stuff it full so that way when you turn it upside down, none of them fall out. That's how you know you have enough. It's all packed in there. And when you hang it up outside, you wanna put it in a sunny place and you wanna put it somewhere that's at least a few feet off the ground, preferably four or five feet off the ground. And you wanna have it secure so that way it doesn't move around in the wind and disturb your bees. And this is a house for mason bees and mason bees are great little pollinators. They're not honeybees, they don't make honey, but they do a good job pollinating and they're very gentle bees. They almost never sting and even when they sometimes do sting, it's not as painful as like a honeybee sting or a wasp sting. All right, I think I'm just about there, maybe one more. And then the other thing is too, this will last for maybe through the fall and then you're gonna wanna take all the papers out and clean out your bee house and then you can make another one for the next spring. And there you go, that's your Mason Bee House. I hope you had fun with the story and activity today. Come check us out for more fun with Calvert Library on all of our social media channels.